Faze Rug, Brian Awadis, 17 million subscribers and still adding to his collection. Formerly a god with the DSR, he's since stopped shooting people in video games and now just shoots real people with a camera. He's been daily vlogging for more days straight than I think that I've been alive, and in them he does everything and anything you can think of. He opens McDonald's, plays Among Us in real life, and also on the computer if you go to a second channel, and perhaps most famously, he fights off wave after wave of killer clowns. There's gotta be a portal of 2016 somewhere in his basement that they just keep leaking out of. Every single one of these vlogs gets millions of views at minimum, and there seems to be no end in sight for Mr. Awadis. So when I heard that Rug was going to be getting his own feature film, directed by the guy who did the last paranormal activity, it made sense. It's a big next step, but if anybody's gonna take it, Rug has been on that list of contenders for a long ass time. The thing that stands out about this movie though, is that when a YouTuber gets a big production, it's usually because an established company like Universal or Warner Bros is putting them in one of their projects, or because they've gotten a YouTube original. But this time around, Crimson is being hosted on what I think is a streaming service called Invis. I'm not sure if it counts, because usually streaming services have a catalog. Invis is just virtual tickets to Crimson and uh, merch bundles with those virtual tickets. But it seems like this is a direct collab between FaZe Clan and Invis themselves. There's FaZe logos on the tickets, the FaZe members in the movie get top billing right under rug, it's all in the promo material. Jesus Christ, the movie is literally called Crimson. But make no mistake, this might in part be a FaZe production, but this is a FaZe rug movie. It's based around his life, his content, and the people around him. The FaZe guys that got top building, they're in this bitch for like five minutes top and don't change the story at all. This is like Rug's own King of Staten Island. Now, this video will have tons of face Rug movie spoilers, so keep that in mind. But in the meantime, did you know that you're not subscribed? Because I know. Hit that red button right there. Go ahead. Go on. Yeah, that's right. Now click the notification bell, too. Good. Good. You'll live another day. Also, disregard that bit if you're already subscribed. But speaking of the people around Rug, this movie stars him, his best friend Anthony, and his cameraman Noah. Shout out Simplistic. And the movie starts off with Rug moving into his new house. Uh, after an intro talking about his momentous rise on YouTube, I mean. God, I wish that were me. <sighs> but anyways, new house! The first night, Rug is all alone in his home, like I am all the time. But weird stuff starts happening. He finds a balloon tied to a chair in his backyard. His front door opens on its own. You know, just the usual housewarming hauntings your friends can buy to scare you on Craigslist. And all of this is being shown to us through vlog camera or security cam footage. And pretty much the whole movie is like that, this handheld style of shooting. I think it fits pretty well with how we're used to seeing FaZe Rug. And in a pandemic, it's a pretty creative way of telling a narrative. This is because the set is just Rug's actual house, and it stars the actual people that live there. The only people you need to have on location is the cast, and because the cameraman is part of the cast, you don't even need a crew for most of the damn thing. It's not a bad way to make a movie if you want to turn a profit, but the paranormal activity aspects of it are definitely showing. I do think this format was smart, though, because it plays to Rug's strengths as a vlogger and lets him sidestep some of the issues he may have when it comes to straight-up acting, but unfortunately, it couldn't cover it entirely. Like, uh, sometimes he just doesn't always react to things. Like, there's a moment when a bunch of balloons float out of the woods single file like kindergartners going on a field trip. That's the responsibility of owning a new house. Are you? Oh, man. That sucks. Oh. What is it with all these balloons? Oh, oh god, Rug, please don't ever change. After that intro, we do get some establishing shots of Rug's house, which do all look nice. And through this, we see for the first time this maid that Rug's mom hired for him without telling him apparently, and that every dude in this movie, without fail, wants to rail. Uh, her name's Marie, by the way. Also, Rug has these wheels hung up on one of his walls that I couldn't stop thinking about while watching the movie because they just kept showing up. It's not that important, but I still can't stop thinking about them. Anyways, Rug is spooked from that first night, understandably, so he can convinces his friends to come around and spend the second one with him. None of them believe him when he says that something fishy is going on at first, but they're in for a rude awakening, because it's like a horror movie, no shit. His parents come over too the next day, and his dad wants to hang a flag on the roof for some reason. They're talking about Marie when all of a sudden, Rug's dad falls off that roof he was talking about. Cause like, we're just having a- Something. Dad! Wait! Oh my god! Dad! Oh, no way! 
Yeah, did you see that? The cut was pretty mid. Like, it looked like it took Rug till an extra second after it happened to react because of the cut. And I recognize that kind of cut because I've had to do it before myself. Sometimes in YouTube skits, you just don't have the footage you need, and you gotta try and piece together what you have. It's like a patch quilt made out of unfortunate editing decisions. You see a lot of that kind of thing in vlogs. And really, that's what this movie feels like. For the most part, it's just a tightly edited, slightly higher production value, feature-length phase rug vlog that's been spun into something of a story. It's like found footage, except nobody found it. They just took it off the SD card and uploaded it themselves. You'll see what I mean by vlog feeling here in a second, trust me. The next 20 minutes or so are these segments of Faze Rug just fooling around in his new house while increasingly out of whack things happen to him. He and his friends are recording a YouTube video where they're just trying to make the world's biggest popcorn, but then the next scene is his power going out mysteriously in the middle of the night and him needing to turn it back on. We see those damn wheels again, he hears a noise outside, and ooh, there's another balloon out there. Why are there so many of them? The next morning he tries to tell his friends about the balloon he saw, but no one believes him still, and they all keep saying it's because he just moved into a place, and that he's not used to being in the new place. So to get his mind off of it, his friends have a surprise for him. More content for his vlog. Turns out the surprise is a weapon of mass destruction. Anthony got Rug a rocket, and he met a stranger in a ski mask to get it. You can tell he's really excited about it, because he gives us his best Borat impression to explain what it does. <laughs> AKA. Hey, that dude should be in pentatonics. Rug is worried that this will all go horribly wrong and says he'll blame his friend if it does, which, of course, it does. <laughs> And because he had weapons grade plutonium in his backyard, the cops show up. And here we have in this next scene a rare instance of this movie having actors in it. Oh my god. This logo here, you don't know what that is? You, know, you wanna see it up close? That logo. Face Kazi clan? clan? So you're saying you're not a part of this face clan? You know, when you point out that FaZe is a clan, it sounds way worse than before. Now, that scene was a typical example of when you put a YouTuber next to an actual actor or actress, it's kind of hard to ignore how much better the trained professional is at their job than the YouTuber. And while that holds true here, Rug did actually exceed my expectations and acting ability. In fact, in this particular scenario where the role he's trying to play is someone who needs to lie but sucks shit at it, the poor performance actually enhances the scene instead of hurting it. It's like accidental stunts in movies that almost get the stunt workers killed, but look really good, so they keep it in the final cut. Now, the same guy that got the cops called on Rug thinks it would be a great idea to go and meet the neighbors, so you know it definitely is not a good idea. And Rug agrees with me that it is a bad idea, so they go and do it anyways. They supposedly go to some houses and talk to neighbors, and during those talks have crazy shenanigans, but they never actually show us any of the discussions. The only thing we get is them apparently walking towards the house, and then it immediately cuts to after the fact, where they're walking away from the home after it happened and saying, all this crazy stuff went down instead of just showing it. The only two places we do get to see them go are this house that squirts water at you when you ring the doorbell, oh god, and meeting this guy sleeping on the side of the road. Hmm, I wonder why they chose to only show us these two things happening, and not the other stuff that they said happened as well. I wonder if those will factor into the story later on. The next day, all the FaZe guys show up to the house, and man, if FaZe Rugs acting made the cop extras look like Leonardo DiCaprio, then the rest of these guys make Rug look like Sam Jackson. Why don't we just, like, not clean and just go chill by the pool. Oh, oh, can I, can I? Also, this scene contains the highest concentration of thirsting over Rug's maid, and it helps to introduce the running joke that Rug is a child and can't take care of himself without his parents' help. A Simon Boyce wrote this screenplay, and he did not hold back. This feels like it could have been a movie written by one of Rug's friends with how vicious some of the jabs at him are. I guess. She's a hot daddy, She's though. Bad, She's a hot <laughs> Yeah, anyways, those were your four minutes of other phase member content. Blaze gets a credit, but I don't think I saw him once, and Kaz over here doesn't even have any lines, and he looks like he'd really rather be playing Fortnite. But after everybody's gone, all that's left is a big mess. Anthony says that as a great housewarming gift, that he'll clean it up, uh, but he doesn't do that. So Rug has to go and do it himself and take out the trash all on his own like a big boy, and he's got phase trash cans. Dude, they should have sold those as merch. They would have a killing. Do you know how unique of an item a phase trash can is? It's not too late, Rug. You can still capitalize. Now, everything seems cool until Noah drops the camera, and in the distance by the trees is something. Our boys wake up the next morning going through this footage, seeing that same figure in the woods. At that point, I feel like they should have realized that Rug is right about everything, but instead, Anthony tries to tell Rug that he's overreacting. It might sound like I'm not happy with that, but it was totally worth it for this line. Look at this. 
Look where you are. This is a $10 million house. Actually, I clickbaited it. It's $5 million. I don't know why. I just thought it was funny. Now, Anthony's a good friend, and he can see that even if he thinks the haunted shit is completely made up, his friend is still down, and he wants to get him another surprise to cheer him up. Part of that surprise being to make Rug run into a door. We're just giggling. Ow! Oh, no, keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Which, by the way, shows excellent commitment to the bit and passion about the film from Rug. Kudos. We go through all that, only to find out that Anthony got Brian a new drone! Rug is super excited and happy about getting it, his mood is all the way back up, and within minutes of getting the drone, he manages to crash it, with some of the best fake gaming I've seen since 2018 TikTok. Also, it turns out they managed to crash it into an old lady's head. You Something right? happened? Hit me in the head. Like, Wait, are you okay? I, I don't know. I don't know. Who would do that? Who the heck would... Fly a drone in this beautiful neighborhood. What the heck? I, you know what? I, I'm going to get to the bottom of this for you. You know, it's a YouTube movie, so expectations are low, but it's got its moments, man. This movie was billed as a horror slash thriller slash comedy, so yeah, pretty much every genre they could get away with squeezing in. You could mark it as a romance if you count eight dudes being horny for the same woman, but I like the way that it doesn't take itself too seriously in parts. It feels like the movie is okay with being what it is, and it smartly plays to that at times. So yeah, they get the drone back and head back to Rugg's office to do some investigative journalism, where the most important part of the movie is revealed. That Rug has a pyramid of his own G Fuel flavor behind him in his office at all times. I can only dream of that shit. I could draw a pyramid of G Fuel on that whiteboard, but it wouldn't be real, would it? Anyways, they want a top-down view of the neighborhood, but unfortunately they lost all the footage, so instead they go to Google Maps. And upon inspection of the mysterious squirting house from earlier, they find that it's shaped like a clown. Ooh! After finding this out, they do the thing that makes the most sense, aka going back to the house to investigate. Upon getting no answers from the neighbors, they sneak into the backyard to search for clues, but all they find is a bounce house. And because Rug is a toddler, as previously established, he can't help but get sidetracked and jump on it. It's a brilliant little piece of character work there. They manage to break that shit so fast and try to get out of there even faster, until they see the same homeless man, who was sleeping on somebody's front lawn and watching them take out the trash, pull up to the side of the house and start looking for them. After a few tension-filled minutes, our brave protagonists are able to get the hell out of Dodge and back to home base. They review their new X-Files found footage and find someone was watching them while they were in the bounce house the whole time. And his friends, instead of finally believing him, want him to just leave the entire thing alone. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this and I have the perfect way to do it and you guys are- No, we're not calling the cops. All three of us are gonna do a stakeout. No, what? No, no, I'm not doing a stakeout. I kinda dig it. The idea that no one wants to be doing any of that except for Rug, but they all still do anyways. So they get to the stakeout and the most important part from the scene is rug farting in his friend's face. <laughs> right after that, though, something else happens, I guess. It's not as big of a deal. But a clown car-sized, but not actual clown car car, pulls up and out walk a bunch of different sized clowns. Spooky shit. You can tell that Brian was traumatized by that shit because the next day he is preparing for war. He has well and truly seen some shit by now, and he's not about to let the shit he's seen shit on him. He is just nailing pictures of the clowns with military precision. His weapon of choice, the paintball gun. Previously used by Napoleon Bonaparte during his conquest quest of Europe, they are both unstoppable short kings. It's pretty clear Rugs on edge. He finds a clown toy in the backyard, and he has some questions as to who put it there, only to find out that it was none other than Marie. How did this end up? Okay, you have to tell me if you are in drugs. I'm gonna talk to your mom because you are acting weird. I'm not on drugs! Oh, so Rug, you're not on drug, huh? That would be drug singular. So you're doing more than one. That explains why you have a Drake portrait in your house. You're out of your mind, Brian. Anyways, the toy was from the clowns and came with a note saying, welcome to the game or something. Now, after doing some more research, Rug finds out about a clown named Bobo, whose dog died in a freak accident at the circus, and afterwards he went on a rampage, killing 10 people. Those should be rookie numbers to Rug. Have you seen his old montages? But apparently next to each body was a note that said the same thing as the one that Rug got. After that kill streak, though, the clown was never seen again. Ooh, the case is still considered open to this day. Ooh, I wonder if that's important. This leads Rug to believe that the person following him is set off by Rug having a dog himself. 
Lola. The next morning, Rug finds a red nose has been put on the front of his Lambo, and honestly, it really fits with the wrap he has. It looks like it could just be another planet. I think he should have kept it on there. But that night, they hear a mysterious noise in the washing machine, and it's because a clown shoe is in there. That's a very bad idea. You can get away with putting shoes in the washer, but never put shoes in the dryer. What follows is a real dramatic scene where the power goes out again. We see a clown standing menacingly in the doorway. These balloons float around Rug's house when nothing we can see pushing them where they go, and they get trapped in Rug's doghouse at some point. The clown isn't given up though, and so he sticks his head through the doggy door. And very smartly, Rug just fucking curb stomps him. He manages to trap the clown in that room, only to reveal that it was just his brother pranking him. There's one scene after that where Rug is gaming, and the whole time I kept getting scared by the reflection in his window. That is, until something actually appeared there, and I started laughing instead because it looked like Rug was doing his best to not look at the actor, just standing there. Ryan's just about at his breaking point here. He wakes up to a red nose on his bedside table and confronts his friends, asking who put it there. He calls Marie, asking if she did it, and ends up firing her because of how paranoid he is. Also, apparently she told Anthony to call her. Did she say anything about me? Yeah, she said for you to call her, so... That broke my immersion so hard, man. That's easily the most unrealistic thing in the entire film. Well, Rug has been lulled into a false sense of security by firing Marie because he thought that she was the one causing all these haunting problems in his life. And now that she's gone, everything will go back to normal until he finds some pies in his fridge. If you made this exact movie 10 years ago, absolutely none of it would make sense. I probably won't stop thinking about that for a while. Regardless, Rug is convinced someone has broken into his house. His friends swear up and down that they didn't do it, so he does the logical thing and goes to call the cops. But what cops show up other than the same ones from before, who think that Rug is a liar, untrustworthy, and probably the cause of half the stuff that he keeps calling them in for? Well, the thing is, they're saying that you were trespassing on their property. Mm, no, I, I've you never... Don't, you don't know anything about that? No, I, we, no, I didn't. Said you burst his bounce house? Uh, what is that? You don't have any proof. Don't call us out again. We come three times, we're hauling you off. No joke. You know, the cops are good actors. I love seeing them on screen. And the way Rug always responds to them is believable too. It sounds like his mouth is in his throat from the pressure. It just feels real. Of course that is until the cops decide that they want to take a selfie with Rug. So can we, um, can we get a selfie? <laughs> a selfie? I'm in the middle are you there. serious? <laughs> Wait, so are you guys pranking us? All right, let's throw up deuces here. Deuces. Hey. Again, they do manage to sell it well, and it's funny. It is just a genuinely enjoyable scene to me, even if it doesn't entirely fit the narrative. That's okay. Sometimes fun is more important than cohesion. But after that, though, Rug has had it. He snaps. He's decided to move out the next day, first thing, and put the house back the fuck on the market. And you know what? Good for him. Making responsible decisions, like running the fuck away from killer clouds. Somehow, Rug has become the smartest horror movie protagonist that I've ever seen. That is, until that night, though, when clowns start coming out in full force, and an actually somewhat well done sequence. There's a big painting of a clown where Drake used to be to let the boys know that the clowns are inside. The handheld shots are looking up at clowns on stilts peering through the windows and because you're lower than them it does kind of make it look like you're being preyed upon and shit. Long takes help build up the intense atmosphere and there's a big present outside his front door which causes Rug to lose his title of smart protagonist because he decides to open the front door, walk to it, and open the fucking thing. <laughs> so dumb. In real life you would be dead. Either way, in the chaos, the clowns took Lola, Rug's dog and he's on the warpath for real this time. He tried leaving it alone, no luck. He tried calling the cops again, no dice. So he's gotta do it himself. He takes matters into his own hands. He's marching to the clown house with Anthony trying to stop him the whole way. And Noah, you know, just doing his thing, hanging out, filming a little. Anthony chooses to stay outside of the house at first, but Noah is a ride or die because he's the cameraman. They're all like that. So they brave their way into the house, which has phase logos hanging from the ceiling as if they knew they were gonna be there. Honestly, if Rug wants his revenge, he he could just sue them for use of the logo without permission. I guarantee a years long legal battle would be more stressful to those clowns than anything that paint gun could do. What follows is probably the most visually interesting scene in the movie. They enter a funhouse themed set and see all sorts of crazy shit. Contortionist clowns, clowns doing flips, paintings of clowns, uh, graffiti lights with clowns around them. Y you know what I'm saying, it's a lot of clowns. There's a lot going on and they switch locations sometimes, trying to hide where the cuts happen, but for the most part you can tell where the transitions are, which can take you out of it. Now, Rug came with a paintball gun, presumably for self-defense, but assuming it wasn't just for show when he was planning to actually defend himself for it, he doesn't even take it off his back at any point in the funhouse. This is despite seeing killer clowns pretty much first thing after entering. Like, my first move would be to pull out the 
gun and demand they give me my dog back, even if all it will do is put some welts on their clown makeup. Anthony is just outside of the front entrance of the house still, making an in-memoriam video for Noah and Brian while busting their balls the whole time. Noah, I mean, we could always find another filmer, but... Still, bro, like you're pretty, you're pretty good at your job. I'm, I'm at a loss for words. We just lost two great, two great, uh, one and a half great people. Of course, he has a change of heart though, and he heads into the maze to save the day, only to become just as endangered as the others. At some point, Rug has to save his friend by getting a high score on a shooting range carnival game, and. That's what he uses the paintball gun for, I guess. Not much happens outside of that until Rug dies. I hear she's literally running. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, he doesn't die, he just falls into a pit where he finds his dog chilling in the tent. But who else could be in that room waiting for him other than Bobo the Clown himself? A master reveal! Bobo gets close up to the camera to explain the grand plan to Brian, a bunch of shots get stitched together in what's meant to represent them escaping from the funhouse, and when we get to the exit, it's the cops finally showing up to do their job! After that, we end up at the police precinct, the cops let them leave after filing paperwork, I would imagine, and they laud Rug as a hero for essentially solving that cold case. The 32-year mystery that was called Operation Crimson. You're a hero, man. I appreciate it. A Thank hero. You. Thank saying you. I'm a hero. No, you're she you she said me. She's you, 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 you were like the sidekick. After that, the only thing left to do is for the cops to ask Brian to make a TikTok with them because apparently the picture they took with them went viral and got them 200 followers. Banger. And yeah, at the end of the day, that was a movie. Overall, for me personally, the experience was pretty bad, but that's okay. I didn't enjoy it a crazy amount, but it also wasn't designed for me to fall in love with it. And aside from all of that, I think it's cool that FaZe Rug got an opportunity to do something like this. More power to him. Also, that shit just looks like it was a bunch of fun with your mates. A movie that's almost entirely just you guys fucking around with your friends had to have been a good time. As stated, it feels like a really long-form, higher-budget vlog, so if you are a FaZe Rug fan or find yourself enjoying content in that vein, there's probably something for you to enjoy here, too. And even if you're not sure, the movie's only like 80 minutes, so you won't have to shine away a year of your life to finishing it. Overall, I give it a movie out of movie. And if you guys have any other social media films, books, shows, or whatever that you think I should take a look at, please let me know. Anyways, be sure to subscribe with notifications on if you know what's good for you. I stream on twitch.tv slash quite, and we have lots of fun there. I'm just saying that you're missing out by missing a stream of mine because of how cool and epic I am. You can follow me on Instagram at quite.png and on Twitter at quite. Anyways, this has been quite, and I'll see y'all next time.